Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is iRyanI, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, and then you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 272 now, guys. I've picked out five new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. But like always, before we jump into them, I want to remind you guys that I'm partnered with Gamer Sups, which in my opinion is the best energy drink on the market. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to check out the link in the description where you can go to their store page and you can also use the code RTD for a 10% discount on all your purchases. I also want to say, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any brand new mods each and every single week. Now that all that's out of the way, we can jump into this week's mods. And starting us off at our number 5 spot, we have a complete overhaul of Winterhold. This is Clef J's Winterhold. And the mod page reads that Winterhold is the former glory capital of Skyrim, seat of the High Kings. Swallowed by the sea, but what is dead may never die. The mod creator's taken a fancy to Winterhold lately, especially since the lovely JP Steele's new assets dropped. With his permission and that of others, I give you a uniquely Clef J lore-friendly experience of the once Great Hold. Using the basis of the Elder Scrolls Arena, where the college was the heart of the city, they've designed this mod as if it's a small corner that was repurposed after the Great Collapse. And in total, this new overhaul of Winterhold comes with new building assets from various mod authors, the Jarl's Longhouse is now a proper fort for an ambitious Jarl, clothing for NPCs have changed so there's no farmhouses for the Jarl's wife, we also have additions and changes to the original farmhouses and stores of the area, and the Frostfoot Inn is redesigned as a repurposed temple before the collapse. There's also a new blacksmith who happens to sell a few crossbow supplies, a new clothier and jeweler to supply the college and travels with proper attire, new Nord NPCs, and a currently inaccessible house to reflect a somewhat bigger population. There's guard houses, stables, gates, and more. There's also some slight details like new window textures and banners made by the mod creator himself, an entirely new town center and graveyard as well. So if you're looking for a brand new overhaul to Winterhold and you want to see it rebuilt and fully remastered, then I'd strongly recommend downloading Clef J's Winterhold mod and giving it a try for yourself because this city is absolutely phenomenal. So that's definitely why this mod's featured here at a number 5 spot this week, so I'd recommend downloading it and giving it a try for yourself. Coming in at the number 4 spot this week, we have a brand new overhaul to all of the staffs that you find throughout Skyrim. This is Prady's Staffs All-in-One. And the mod page reads that this is an overhaul of Skyrim staffs, giving each staff type and enchantment its own unique appearance. It contains all of the mod creator's past mods with improvements and 6 new staff models. It also uses particle effects and lights to make these staffs look more visually unique and feel more magical. And with all of these staff models and different crystals and particles combined, there's about 45 variants in total. They've also remade collisions for all of the staves, so there's no more spinning around forever whenever you drop them, and particles will now only show whenever your character is wielding the staves, or has them on their back. They won't show up on display or when dropped on the ground to avoid turning the place into a rave and causing FPS drops. They've also tried to make it so that each magic element has two models, one for spells which deals damage or are made for fighting in some way, and other made for support type spells and enchantments. So we're looking at changes to the Conjuration, Restoration, Illusion, and Alteration staffs, as well as the Staff of Magnus, the Dragon Priest staffs, and the Aeliad staff, and even unenchanted staffs used for crafting. Destruction staffs, on the other hand, now have their own unique model, and they no longer use the Dragon Priest staff model because it didn't make sense to the mod creator that everyone would be running around with a Dragon Priest staff simply because they're casting a Destruction spell. And this also makes the Dragon Priest staffs more rare and unique, rather than them appearing all over the place. 
And each staff also has its own unique crystal and particle effect based on the spell it casts, so there's so much to unpack here whenever it comes to staves. I never thought that they would completely transform everything as well as add more variants into the game. Like I said, over 45 variants of staves you can find all throughout the game. So if you're playing as a mage in your next playthrough, this would definitely be a mod I'd tack on there because I myself, I never really use staves too much, but there's tons of mods out there that improve staves, give you more magicka whenever you're using staves. I know we've covered a mod that does that in the past. Stabs in Skyrim I feel like aren't used or appreciated enough in Skyrim so it's great to see mods like this come out and completely transform everything and add more variants that you can find and just give you a whole new arsenal of stabs to wield. This is just a great thing to see added to Skyrim because the stabs really needed some attention. So if you're playing as a mage in your next playthrough and you're going to be using stabs or you're someone who uses stabs already and you just want a huge upgrade then pretty stabs all in one is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out so go download it and become a true mage for yourself. Coming in at the number 3 spot, we have another completely new transformation to one of the cities in the game. This is Clef J's Morthal. I know we just covered Clef J's Winterhold and now we're covering it in the same week two spots later, but I guess there was just a massive drop from Clef J because he released some amazing town overhaul. And the mod page reads here that this is another city mod by Clef J, and this is a deep aesthetic overhaul of Morthol. They always felt that the settlement required much more attention, and it also once served as a seat for a high king and capital of all Skyrim. The mod creator is given Morthol new buildings, interior and exterior, using a variety of modders' resources. It makes it look cozy, spooky, and still a very Nordic design. Now this place looks as if it was once the capital hold of Skyrim, properly defended against from the monsters of the swamp. Some might not favor the upper middle ages design of the city walls, but they thought it looked nice, and I do too. This mod provides new walls, gates, and towers, updated vanilla interiors, new custom interiors for High Moon Hall and Moorside Inn, new vendor NPCs such as a blacksmith guard and two general traders, a new paint job to the town, both in buildings and landscape, and it's resource light, so there's no FPS drops. It's vanilla friendly with many patches for other mods, and while still a foreboding place, hopefully this hold now lives up to its name. And as you can see, this is a truly amazing overhaul of Morthol. You know, there's so many new walls and buildings put in place and they made it look almost completely different. It's almost unrecognizable from the vanilla game. And I really like what they've done to this. Another thing that I'm impressed by is the fact that they got this all within 18.22 megabytes. You know, there's so many new textures and just things to see all throughout Morthol that it seems almost impossible they jammed it into that small memory space. So that's extremely impressive to me. So if you are looking for a brand new transformation to the city of Morthol and you want it to be completely new and a more fortified place that also has more NPCs and things to do around the town, then Clef J's Morthol is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out. And that's why it's featured here at a number three spot this week. So I'd recommend downloading and adding it to your next playthrough of Skyrim. Coming in at the number two spot, we have a complete rework of so many different cities in Skyrim that I feel like this is just the city overhaul week of Skyrim mods. I mean, so many great overhauls came out this week that it was so hard to actually choose the mods to cover within this week, but now we finally have a new complete rework of a ton of different areas all in one mod. This is Architecture Enhanced, a Retexture Bundle mod. And this mod contains 4K renditions of Riften, Windhelm, and Whiterun, as well as the Stony AF Markarth and Dwemer Ruins mod that we covered a few weeks back, and even the Sublime Solitude, our HD rework mod. Finally, you also have the Photorealistic Farmhouses mod as the icing on the cake here. So there's so much to be covered, you know, Rift and Windhelm, Whiterun, Markarth, Dwemer Ruins, Solitude, and Farmhouses, all within one 400 megabyte mod. And these are some very impressive and high quality textures as well. And if you did happen to notice, it doesn't cover Winterhold or Morthol, so that does mean that you could get Clef J's Winterhold and Morthol and this mod. So with all three of those mods put together from this week, we have a complete transformation of every single city in Skyrim, and I absolutely love that. And a little note from the mod creator himself, he says that this is a retexture of all of the major cities with an extra treat for the farmhouses in 1k textures. It will be compatible with 99.9% .9 of the mods out there since it's just retextures, meaning you can safely put it below any other textures that you may have. Now as you can see, these new renditions of these cities look absolutely phenomenal. 
I'm truly impressed with how they took on Whiterun and Riften. I think those are the two best ones out of this entire pack here, but everything else also looks amazing. You know, the Sublime Solitude looks perfect, all the colors that you can find all throughout Solitude, and it just really brings some life into the city. I absolutely love everything about this mod, you know? And if you are looking for something to completely transform everything, this is definitely a mod I'd recommend going towards because they fit it all within 400 megabytes, and that's pretty low considering the fact it covers pretty much every single city that you can travel to in the game. And that's definitely why the Architecture Enhanced, a retexture bundle, is featured here at our number two spot this week, so I'd strongly recommend downloading and adding it to your load order as well. Coming in at the number one spot this week, I'm extremely happy that this mod's finally back. This is Nordwar all in one. And it's actually the mod pack that was left out of our last load order video. We had a mod called Simply Realistic Weapons and Armors, and that mod was sadly taken down. You know, there was a big mod purge that completely got rid of a lot of the mods that I had in that load order, so I definitely have some updating to do, of course. But that was probably one of the biggest mods within my last load order that was very devastating whenever I figured out it got taken down. But here it is again, <laughs> and I'm super happy to say that it's just as good as it was back in the load order. And it's also less memory space as well, so that's kind of the icing on the cake there. And Nordwar All-in-One is a mod pack that contains most of Nordwar UA's armor and weapon mods. And this mod was designed to showcase his work throughout the world through consistent leveled lists that play well with his other mods. This mod adds armor and weapons for some of the unjoinable factions in Skyrim, and this version distributes these sets to their respective factions and allows you to craft them too. They also added in new armor for the Imperial Legion, and in total, this mod features the Vanilla Armor Replacer, the Unplayable Faction Armors, as well as the Nordwar UA Armors Compilation mod. So this is a mod pack of other mods, all jam-packed into one big 827.12 megabyte mod, and it features all of the weapons and armors that we missed out on since that last mod got taken down. So this is definitely a great day in the Skyrim modding community this mod is finally back. I don't know if you guys were missing this mod, but I for sure was. And I've been looking for new armor mods that are all in one and you don't have to completely just download a ton of different armors and pile them up in one big section. I always like having just one armor mod that kind of has the same style with everything so you're not mixing and matching different themes so they don't clash and everything still feels lore friendly. This is a perfect mod to do that because not only does it cover all the armors in Skyrim, but it also leaves most of the vanilla ones in too. So if you're looking for a mod to completely transform every single armor in the game all within one simple mod so you don't have to go searching for a ton of different armor mods and combining them all together, then Nordwar All-in-One is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out. So go download it and completely transform your arsenal of armor and weapons for yourself. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new, it really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 Mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can join our Discord. I'll be sure to leave the Discord link in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can join us on there and leave mod suggestions to there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters, thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and I'll talk to you guys later.